if anyone is outside the time zone. <laughs> uh, my name is Lakshmi and uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, Talio Enterprise and onboarding and recruiting uh, uh, overview. Uh, before starting that, uh, uh, I'm, uh, uh, let me introduce myself a little bit. Uh, as I said, my name myself is Lakshmi and uh, 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 I have been working in Oracle applications and Oracle Fusion for the past uh, 13 years. And um, uh, most of my experience is into HRMS domain functionally. And I was working in uh, technical domain in uh, uh, other modules too. Uh, uh, I have been coming to Fusion. I have been uh, Fusion and Talia. I have been working in uh, 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 Fusion applications for the past uh, three and a half years. And uh, uh, and for recording Talio, uh, I did a couple of uh, uh, implementations in the past uh, two years. And uh, uh, I'm glad I'm here to talk about uh, Talio EE, that is Enterprise Edition today. <clears throat> so before proceeding further, uh, I would like to, if possible, I would like to quickly uh, understand what are your expectations uh, from your world from this session and if possible if you can uh, introduce yourself quickly and then we can start the session <clears throat> Oh well, hi I'm uh, Shazad Ahmed based in uh, UK Birmingham uh, mm -hmm. just want to get an overview of uh, Taleo just to complement the fusion uh, module Okay. Uh, I'm more of a EBS functional consultant uh, for the past uh, almost two decades. Uh, but I just want to see how Taleo links in with Fusion and then look yeah. at Fusion yeah. in a bit more detail later. Thank you. Sure. My name is Tunde. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also from UK. I'm a mm -hmm. friend of Shaz, the guy that spoke earlier. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, I've been in EBS for a little while. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, uh, uh, also I understand uh, fusion as well, especially the global HR and payroll. So okay. I just want to learn Tally as well, mm -hmm. especially from configuration point of view, okay. and also the templates, how to develop all the templates, the UDFs, uh -huh. and uh, also uh, uh, just like you said, onboarding and the recruitment. Sure. So just want to know the, te not, not really the technical part of it, but just want to know the, um, how the PDFs work in uh, Talio and all those kind of things. So that's the reason why I joined this uh, program. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else like to come forward and? Uh... Hi, uh, my name is Sumir. I'm EBS HRMS consultant. Mm -hmm. As I have knowledge on eye recruitment, I just want to know how uh, the eye recruitment of Fusion works. So that's the reason for me to attend this session. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, hello, uh, myself, I'm Santos Sutlawar. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I have five years experience. So as I'm working at a HRMS functional consultant at Lonara. Okay. Yeah, uh, just I would like to know the how the fusion uh, it could be. Perfect. Oh, okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Hey, this is Hamir. I'm working as the EDS uh, technical consultant uh, as well as I'm working. Uh, Yeah, your voice is a little breaking though. That's okay. <clears throat> okay. Hi there, I'm Thaddeus. Yeah. Um, I'm an EBS uh, Fusion consultant as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm joining in to learn a bit more about uh, Talio. I, I don't know Talio, but mm -hmm. I'm primarily uh, uh, ACM. Uh, payroll 
Mm -hmm. um, but would like to add this hopefully to my skill set. Sure. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> yeah. So. Uh, Next to me. Yep. Yeah. Uh, can you please explain this session? Is actually uh, uh, this training is basically uh, uh, more about a functional or a technical or it's like. A, yeah, I'm going to talk about that. Uh, I'm going to start that now. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. So. Wait, uh, uh, most of you, I mean, some of you have been in HRMS background. That is one good news. And uh, I'm glad you people came forward to learn uh, Talio. Uh, coming to the session, what I'm going to talk today and what, I, what I'm going to cover in our upcoming sessions is all about, um, uh, I'm going to cover both functional and technical. I want to talk about how the Talio functionality is, and also I want to talk about how can we configure different components that is being involved in all of the functional processes of this Talio. And uh, uh, when I say when I say configuration, apart from configuration, I'm also going to talk a little more about. Uh, um, one second, let me mute on or start recording mine. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Apart from the configuration, I also want to talk about uh, integrations, what Fusion is being, uh, sorry, what, what Talia is being uh, when we are interacting with the uh, the third party applications that can be Oracle Fusion or that can be uh, any other application. How Talio can do the integrations, okay? And I also gonna talk about uh, some part about how we can enable the Talio product in the mobile so that uh, uh, either hiring managers or uh, um, uh, recruiters or power recruiters can, uh, even the candidates, how they can do the day-to-day -day work in the mobile application. So my plan is to cover uh, uh, functional configurations and technical, that's my plan. And uh, 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 as and when we go through the subsequent sessions, I, uh, I wanna divide into, uh, into uh, these three parts and I'm gonna talk about that, okay? So <clears throat> before that, let me try. Let me try to give you some brief understanding of what a Talio is and what Talio is offering to us, and where we are fitting into uh, to learn the level of extension. What we can do on on this uh, Fusion Talio Enterprise Edition product. Okay. So when I said Talio, we have two kinds of product: Talio Enterprise Edition and Talio Business Edition. So whoever is planning to uh, 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 step into the Oracle Fusion family, most of times they learn Oracle Talio Enterprise Edition. Okay, so coming to the come to the Talio product family, Oracle Talio is actually a, a, a it's a cloud product. Okay, which which Oracle bought. Uh, some time back, and uh, they use Oracle using Talio primarily for their on, uh, recruiting and onboarding in-house product of Oracle Fusion family. The Oracle Fusion Talio is offering the Oracle Talio Learn, Oracle Talio Performance Management, Compensation and Rewards, Engagement and Retention, Talent Review. These are all the models what Talio is offering, but whatever performance management, compensation, review, engagement and retention, most of these modules are already available in the Oracle Fusion Human Capital Management product family. So <clears throat> it is already available. Uh, most, of, most of the clients who, uh, uh, who purchase Talio, they only go for recruiting and onboarding and some of them go to Talio Learn and development product too. So that, that's how typically 
uh, clients move forward because uh, remaining whatever performance comp or engagement review they, they all these modules are are uh, best being used if you go with the oracle fusion human capital management okay for people who is not aware of uh, fusion human capital management is actually a oracle cloud uh, product uh, uh, which actually a product of uh, oracle fusion and as you all know oracle fusion is actually one of the biggest project that is being done uh, ever by any uh, uh, any IT company so it's one of the biggest uh, uh, i mean maximum number of hours man hours and money or energy is being spent on this fusion product and it is released in 2011 open world and from 2011 onwards people started using this uh, fusion products and uh, for the past Two years, the uses of these products are becoming uh, becoming uh, uh, too much, and uh, even the even if you see the Oracle uh, sales, uh, the percentage of increase is also uh, pretty high compared to the past years. Okay, so yeah, this is all about Oracle Talia product, and uh, uh, let me move move forward. And then um, uh, talk about Oracle recruiting and onboarding product. And uh, we will see what Talio is uh, offering out of the box. And uh, we will see what what part of things we need to configure and what part of things we need to, need to learn and what how the integrations works. We'll talk all about that. We may not talk all about that in this session, but I will just try to give end-to-end -end, uh, functionality what Oracle Talio is being offered. And then we will... Uh, uh, talk about the remaining parts in subsequent classes okay so <clears throat> for uh, as i'm talking about recruiting and onboarding right so any recruiting and onboarding product right so uh, the, the 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 primary step where an end user st steps into the oracle uh, not oracle any recruiting product is the Career section, right? Right. So any company has that uh, has the uh, recruiting portal uh, enabled to the outside world, or uh, our internal world, or staffing agencies. Okay. So the, the portal is exposed to the outside world, and that is the from end user perspective. That is the beginning point to interact with uh, the recruiting application of any company. Okay, so that is that is that is called career uh, career portal. Okay, in Fusion we call it as a career section. So what our portal we have, uh, uh, I'm showing here, and this portal we can design in the Talio, and these career portals can be designed in the Talio, and we can have multiple career portals. One career portal for uh, candidates, the external world, external applicants who apply for the job or who try to look for the job in our company and a uh, employees who works internally within the company and internal employer like to interact with our, with our recruiting application internally that is called internal internal portal and staffing agencies who typically help us in in, in recruiting the employees for us or uh, contractors for us or, or any kind of other worker the staffing agencies like to help us Right. For them, actually, we need to give a separate uh, uh, career portal access so that the staffing agencies can log into and uh, 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 they will have more access than what employees and external candidates will have and uh, help us in recruiting the process. So the typical, typical login points or step-in points for uh, uh, for 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 into our recruiting application, recruiting and onboarding application, right? That is a career section. So once once a login, right? So that's a typical way of login. But coming to coming to the typical way, how uh, uh, either a recruiter or a power recruiter or a hiring manager, how actually they they uh, log into Talio and how actually they uh, build the recruiting application for us so what talio offers is talio offers if, uh, when when we log into the talio i want to talk about how to log into talio and how it works i want to talk about all the later point of time i'm just trying to cover where and what 
and which things will happen okay so recruiting center is a portal where actually the creation of requisition happens to create a new vacancy or uh, 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 to look at how many uh, uh, how many uh, people applied for the vacancies or what are the tasks assigned to us right in general whenever whenever recruiter what do recruiter recruiters do right when what recruiters will the typical day to day process for them is just go to the uh, uh, their uh, recruiting application in our case it is a tallyo they go to the recruiting application they create a requisition once they create a requisition there is a process flow involved in the while creating the requisition i going to talk about that in a while uh, uh, what sections uh, i mean what job they are trying to create for at what location who is the hiring manager and uh, what is the expected compensation for this requisition and uh, uh, what are the pre screening questions that we are going to attach to this requisition and uh, 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 what are the other mandates that we needed for the requisition and we are going to uh, we are going recruiter, recruiter is going to fill all those details while creating the requisition right so requisition nothing but a vacancy that uh, that can be published to the outside world or the internal world so that people can come and apply for the job or search for the jobs right so this recruiting center is actually what tallyo offers where user has to come and log in not user user that is a recruiter or a staffing manager or a hiring manager or a hr or a staffing support anyone it is the beginning point acquisition center is the beginning point for them to come and log in and create the requisitions or look at the requisition what they created and uh, what are the tasks assigned to them and uh, what are the offers they have created and uh, what are the status of each and every offer and what are the if if employee is accepted the offer what is the on, onboarding task that is pending for them to do so all this things will be here in this single point of portal okay and i'm going to talk about uh, uh, what this portal is how we can customize this how we can embed each of these sections and how we can uh, we can enable uh, the the look and feel and how we can control the visibility of these sections and visibility of access in each and every component of this section how we can configure that all those things we can talk about when we talk about the configurations and when we talk about uh, 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 in detail about the requisition center and when we log into the application okay so this is the place for that and if you see in this requisition center so what are the things were here these are all the sections what they can see and in the right side they can also see the communications tab and uh, there's a help tab actually so communication tab actually where uh, um, we can we can um, we can have uh, a general notifications to the to the population who are logging into the fusion application and um, uh, we can also add uh, any links here where help links are our our documentation center where they can go and look for the documentation that documentation center can be available within the tallyo or that can be available in the fusion universal content manager where they can go and uh, maintain the documentation there okay so we can we can we can we can maintain this communications here and if we have enabled the social sourcing as well in the tallyo then we here we can actually enable uh, employees to uh, uh, log into social networks and uh, uh, and share the what acquisition what are they going to create we are talking about, we will going we are going to talk about uh, social sourcing in the latter point of time so all those things can be done in the communications and also there is something called a video clips here this is actually the help uh, standard help what oracle will offer when we when we go to this uh, uh, help clip where actually we can look at uh, look at the video standard videos what oracle is offering for creating a requisition for looking for the candidates or navigating this requisition center home page this is the standard video clips what oracle is offered but, but if you want to customize that we can also go and create your own uh, uh, help uh, uh, content 
But for that, you need to have the Oracle UPK license, that user productivity kit, where actually you can build your own help content and you can embed it in the recognition center application. Okay. So this is this is where actually I'm just talking about this where typically most of the time the recruiters or hiring managers spend their source uh, time and energy uh, to build the requisitions actually. So I'll talk about it. Now, once the requisition is created, right? Once the requisition is created, uh, sometimes uh, what happens is uh, the hiring manager. Coming to the terminology of hiring managers, staffing manager, recruiters, I think uh, some of you been has a background of recruiting application. People who doesn't have a background of recruiting application, typically in any company, uh, uh, the people who interact with the uh, with the recruiting application is primary recruiters. We know that in the recruiters we have different categories of recruiter. Basically, uh, 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 Power recruiter who will have end-to-end -end access, and uh, uh, staffing recruiters who will have just access to go and create requisition and look at the candidates who applied for the jobs and look at the candidates uh, to whom uh, whom they can for go and forward ahead with the subsequent uh, candidate selection workflow. Uh, uh, that is the second uh, kind of uh, uh, recruiters, staffing recruiters, and. Uh, Apart from these two, we have we also have managers. So some company allows that managers also can go and create vacancies. If manager finds out, okay, in my department, I need an employee, I need a contractor, I need some full -time, some temporary employee. If that's what uh, recruit uh, staff hiring manager feels, manager also can go and create the uh, vacancy or requisition uh, in the recruiting application. Okay, when it's a hiring manager, it's a typical employee's boss, we can say that, typical typical manager. Coming to the staffing manager, where actually uh, these are, uh, these, are these, these staffing managers can be, can be an employee within the company or that, that, that manager can be an external staffing agency. Uh, uh, that a question? Okay, let me mute it down for a while. And you can unmute yourself if you have any questions. Okay, so uh, that, that person can be can be from the staffing agency too, right? And HR, typically HR, HR itself uh, uh, can, can able to access, can able to uh, access the recruiting activities and onboarding activities. And some companies based on this company policies, they might give access to the HR to the recruiting application and uh, uh, an onboarding application and some some companies only they will give access to onboarding application alone so that when i am hr logs and they could able to see only onboarding and uh, offer tasks they won't see the requisition and the candidates so that that hr is only responsible when employee is hired into the system what are the onboarding tasks that needs to be taken care and what are the subsequent steps we have to follow for that okay and some company need access to both recruiting and onboarding application it depends upon uh, how our company policies are okay so we, we will talk about how to how to define recruiters hr staffing managers <clears throat> staffing support hiring managers how we can categorize the people how we can uh, categorize the users and how 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 we can restrict the access by user roles user groups, user types, configuration profiles. We're going to talk about all the security configurations at a point of time. And here my whole concern is what are the typical major screens, what Talio offers, and uh, what is the functionality behind that? If possible, what is the configuration behind that? Okay, so next thing, eShare Response Center. So previous screen where 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 power recruiter or manager can log into the fusion or uh, recruit a daily application and maintain the vacancies that are created but sometimes what what uh, what Talio can offer is they offer something called e share response center it's nothing but an email sharing of a vacancy and the manager whoever responsible for the vacancy can also 
click on the link in that uh, uh, in the email and also access the requisition it is not necessarily that they have to go and log in every time so for hiring managers whenever a requisition uh, approval is sent for them to review so uh, that manager can uh, log into that uh, uh, application through the issuer uh, issuer response center and they can uh, review the vacancy what that created and then they could they, they can do the approvals if approval processes is enabled behind that requisition so it is another way of accessing the requisition center through issuer response center so some companies provide this mechanism only for hiring managers to review the review the vacancy and get the approval and they may not give the access to the recruiting center application but they will give enable access through issuer response center so how do how do we do this correspondence and how do we build this uh, mail template and how do we enable the workflows how we can do static workflows and dynamic approval routing based on the vacancy being created based on the hiring manager assigned to the vacancy and based on the recruiter who is creating the vacancy and do all those things we can uh, we can cover later point of time okay and again come to the uh, come to the main configuration where typically we, we need to do uh, in the in the, the talia application is everything goes in the configuration screen uh, in the talia where these are these are the components which we will be using very thoroughly very widely to do all kind of configurations okay that that can be as i said uh, 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 well, the the security that is the creating the roles different user types user groups or if you come if you come about uh, creating the career sections the internal employee portal or external employee portal so external candidate portal or staffing agency portal and also if if if, if any screen when we log into any screen how we can how we can uh, enable the security access to the set of sections in the screen and each section how we can restrict access the visibility of each and every field in the screen and even at field level how can we enable the security like for some set of employees it should be uh, uh, it should be read only mode and some set of employees should be in edit mode or uh, uh, some sort of employee should not be visible at all so at field level also we can we can uh, we can enable the securities enable the uh, field properties okay and when i say field from field to uh, from field to from field to section and section to form and form to file we have access to each and every component to uh, uh, to do the configurations it is not limited so uh, what i see talio had given much more uh, configuration or customization functionality than what uh, uh, oracle fusion is being offered today so uh, we can, we can see uh, we, can, we can do at that level okay so yeah we will talk about each and each and every part each and every section is going to take one or two classes for us that's the level of uh, uh, details uh, we are going to have in each and every component each and every in each and every component each and every uh, uh, line here is going to take a day or two it is that much level of details what we have in this uh, uh, talia configuration part okay and typically recruiting administrators sometimes user managers performance administrators onboarding administrators and it people use this configuration screens performance administrator if we use the performance module if not we won't be using there won't be any uh, kind of user roles like performance administrators so this is a typical place where we maintain all our uh, configuration part okay yeah coming to the other part we have seen requisition center requisition is actually nothing waiting, but where the recruiting part can be done the next one is onboarding part once the recruiting is done one employee is hired into the system so where we do the onboarding process onboarding process in sense when employee is hired then we should have some uh, a background check or we should have some uh, 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 mandatory documentation that needs to be taken from the candidate and uh, 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 
any other kind of uh, company specific details that needs to that needs to be done some legal compliances other stuff all those things can be done in this uh, onboarding process and uh, uh, onboarding process is equally important because uh, that is a place where uh, where most of the hiring information most of hiring information in sense when we hire an employee into the fusion application if you use fusion or if you use any other in-house application or any other custom application for maintaining your core headshot data then for that for that system this is the source for the source of the data once employee once employee completes the onboarding process then that that person is ready to move into our core headshot system where actually all our employee our contractor records will be maintained Right, so we'll I'll talk about that how we can do the integration between Talio and uh, other products later. Okay, so these are the typical these are the these are the place for that onboarding process where we will know what tasks are pending with you and which person which candidate and what is the status of the onboarding task for that uh, uh, for that person and that will also say where. Uh, we are pending it is pending with address form it means you need you, you need to take the address of this person and then uh, uh, it's the current status is in progress similarly in a whole how many candidates you are being processing right now in your login based on the login that uh, that we go into the system then we, we can look at that uh, uh, the pending processes or pending tasks okay and uh, 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 this was this again this sections again we can fully customizable fully configurable and the access of uh, what employees what candidates you can see and what candidates you can't see it's go with the olf functionality organization location and job function i'm going to talk about that in uh, in, in next couple of slides which is actually very a uh, core important uh, foundation of uh, talio uh, product itself okay so yeah, going forward, the reports and analysis. How do you build the reports out of this uh, uh, Talia application? And Oracle has integrated Oracle OBI, Oracle Business Intelligence Enterprise Edition. So what Oracle did, Oracle, uh, uh, whatever Talio, Talio uh, data dictionary is there, Oracle already moved that in, into the uh, OBIE, the integrated product, which you can uh, click in, click on Talio application itself, and that will subsequently directly step into you to the OBIE, where you can uh, create the reports, and also it has a very good flexibility, which actually provides uh, analysis. Analysis in sense, Oracle has already created the. Uh, subject areas for you when it's a subject area the subject areas is the place where you no need to have idea about the table name and column name you can just drag and drop the fields what talio uh, uh, what talio is offering to us and uh, and the and the explanation of each and every field is very much detailed very much uh, 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 user oriented uh, terminology the wording or naming so they can easily understand what is the use of this field and you can drag and drop the field into uh, your uh, uh, analysis or your report report while creating the report and you can uh, easily look at the data what uh, what is there uh, uh, in the respective report okay so it's, it's very easy what i want to say is very easy to create the reports here it is not necessary that you need to know the sql knowledge if you know the sql knowledge we have other ways to create the report too that is more technical level but as a functional level we could be able to explore any data whatever data we have in the in the tally application and uh, by default oracle provides some standard reports you can use the standard reports to look at the uh, uh to look at the uh, current vacancies or uh, the average time to fill to each and every vacancy and uh, uh, and we can get the status of the vacancies and the candidates and the and the uh, onboarding tasks 
for by each and every country so you have a lot of flexibility to pull out the data from the from the uh, from this OBIE, which is integrated to the Talia product. And typically, report specialists or managers or analysts use this uh, uh, OBIE tool to pull out the data, which is very useful. And we are, I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, in our sessions, I'm going to talk about the reports and analytics alone for the for the for three, four days at least, because uh, uh, they're actually. Uh, Building the reports is, is very quick, but more than building the reports, we have very good functionalities what we can build in the, in the OBIEE reports. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, we, we, can, we, can, we can use the flexibility of it. Okay, so if, uh, if someone has background about web services, then um, um, uh, you could also pull data from the external sources into uh, our reporting. Example, uh, 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 one way, one, one kind of reporting you can, you can visualize by the predictive analysis. Example, if you want, if you are, you can predict who is the, uh, who is the possible employee that is, that is about, that is about to leave our company. What is the possible risk of the iteration? So you want the, to the possible risk of iteration by country or by region, by location or by department or by division based on how your organization structure is. If you wanted to pull it out, how you can figure out what is the, uh, 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 what is the possible uh, uh, possible risk? How do you know that? That is based on a number of factors like uh, based on the employee performance in the past uh, um, three years or past two years is the performance is getting uh, is going down or uh, uh, and how is the uh, how is the behavioral factors of the employee maybe one is managed to do the performance evaluation by quarterly or by half yearly or by annually based on the manager feedback based on the success criteria based on the uh, uh, a performance criteria what we have configured into our system if those are the component that needs to be considered into the account while uh, while assessing the possible risk we can pull the details as well and as i said if we have uh, if, we, if we know the uses of web services you can also uh, log into i mean you can also automatically go to the linkedin profile public social equity profile and look at the uh, look at the way the employee is uh, uh, interacting in the LinkedIn, maybe with what are public access, maybe if employees updating frequently in the LinkedIn, or if employees frequently uh, viewing posts in the LinkedIn, we can, also, we can also think that what potential risk of this employee uh, uh, that moving out of the company. So th there are many factors which we can take into account. What I wanted to say is those factors can be bring into this reporting tool and we can create our reports. And it's visually, uh, uh, while creating the reports, while creating the analytics, it, is, it gives a very much flexibility uh, uh, while creating, the, by being the look and feel. And uh, 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 look and feel, it is very much useful. So you can, you can explore that. Okay, we will talk about uh, this in detail and we'll take some use cases, some functional examples, and we'll see how we can see that in this reporting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And also, this Oracle uh, tally, we can enable it, it in the mobile with an out of the box feature. And, uh, and also you have flexibility to modify each and every form, visibility of each and every form or the mobile separately. So when I say separately, it means the configuration in our recruiting application or onboarding application is separate, coming to a desktop application and coming to mobile, we have another, another set of configuration that you have a provision to do so that uh, the, those, those configuration can enable the screens to fit into your iPad devices, uh, I mean tablet devices or phone devices and based on the size and uh, screen. So we, can, we, can, we have the flexibility to configure by, by tablet, by phone and by different kinds of phones. So you have the, the different kinds of phones, mean the size of uh, the dimensions, right? The, uh, the, uh, the 
vertical and horizontal dimensions, you can also configure uh, your screens so that the look and feel won't be missed. And uh, we have Oracle Tap is a is a is a is a free downloadable product which we can download from the from your uh, uh, Apple Store or Play Store or any other uh, typical uh, mobile specific uh, application store. And uh, once you download that, we have to do some set of configurations to enable the access to your company's uh, uh, application. Once we enable that, then you could be able to uh, see the you can able to uh, get the notif you could able to get the notifications if it, any approvals are needed you can approve it or that and then also you can go and see the status of the recruiting and you can also keep some alerts so that if uh, uh, if if a, if a is, is candidate is available for the vacancy then uh, you will get an alert saying that hey some potential candidate has just viewed or just applied for the job go ahead and interact with him so the several kinds of alerts and notifications you could able to uh, 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 <laughs> what is tap stand for that's very good question i think it is a, a, a talent access platform something i still don't remember something like that so <clears throat> This is one thing what uh, uh, Talio mobile application, but we have Oracle Fusion application uh, for Oracle Fusion. Also, we have uh, 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 another. Uh, uh, previously, they used to they used to have Oracle Tap to access Oracle Fusion applications too. Now, uh, now they are, now it is uh, 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 I think uh, Oracle Cloud Center some app they have given so which we can access Oracle global HR uh, typical mobile uh, applications and uh, 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 and Oracle is working on the integration between these two products together instead of having two different applications to see different notifications from each applications so trying to integrate that okay so yeah this is one one negative thing when it's a mobile recruiting center uh, uh, based on the schedule how we are going to design in general if you need to cover all the mobile configuration it takes at least uh, uh, four five days to cover the whole mobile recruiting center configurations alone it takes that much time because uh, if you go with each and every configurations what we can do to enable a, a recruiting or onboarding application to mobile there are some set of uh, different configuration that needs to be done to enable it in the mobile so it takes a uh, little time so you'll see how uh, uh, I, i'm going to publish the schedule of uh, 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 this 30 30 or 35 days and we will see how many days we can fit into for this okay so yeah coming to the is mobile function only on iPhone? No, not an iPhone. It can be enabled on uh, any kinds of phones and any kind of tablet devices. Though the description mentions that uh, iPhone uh, is not that. Yeah, coming to the integrations. So as I said, Talio Enterprise Edition is a different product. Different product in sense, it is being hosted on a different different uh, different location different location in sense different you can you can assume a different server and that has a different data model that is more important and it's a different data model the uh, it has its own set of uh, uh, tables views and other objects because this stalio product itself is not a uh, not a not a foundation product from oracle oracle bought it from a uh, third party Talio and uh, they, they brought into the fusion. So it means that product has their own set of uh, data model and own set of uh, processes. And those processes are not completely integrated in the fusion applications as they're not integrated. So they are still be treated as a different product. As it's still treated as still different product, then what you need to do, whatever data is residing in that product, that data has to move to fusion at the end of the day. So, okay. So let me clarify here when I say fusion, why I'm talking about fusion HCM is so Talio is a different onboarding and recruiting product. Doesn't mean that this Talio always works with the fusion HCM, fusion uh, 
Fusion Hr products. It's not like that. You can use Stalio to integrate to integrate with any of our custom applications, our in-house application that can be EBS or PeopleSoft, JD AdWords, or your own custom Java application, .NET application. You can use any application as your uh, as your core HR or payroll or whatever application, and you can interact with the Talio and uh, Talio only acts as recruiting and onboarding application, and we can move data to and fro from Talio to your in-house application and you can maintain that too that's also very much available and most of the clients are being are using the Talio like that today okay so but when when i say global hr or fusion hcm or cloud hcm what does it mean as, as at the beginning of the slide as i was telling that this Talio itself is a uh, uh, recruiting and onboarding product of a fusion product family Okay, so Fusion product family instance, Fusion Human Capital Management itself is a very popular product. That is a that is the a foundation product of Oracle company itself. So and uh, as the Oracle Oracle uh, don't like don't want to uh, create their own recruiting system, but they're doing it now. We'll talk about that in a while. They don't have a. a, a they don't like to use air equipment, whatever they have in Oracle e-business would be for. They, they feel that that is outdated and uh, uh, we have Talio, which is much more powerful and much more features coming out of the box of Talio. Instead of moving this air equipment, what is the Oracle in-house product? Instead of moving air equipment to the Oracle Fusion, what they did is, instead of that, they outrightly went and bought it and thought about it a product Talio and using that. Okay, so when we say Fusion product family, Talio is recruiting onboard product, recruiting onboard module. So we need to integrate that module with the Fusion module. Even though it is a Fusion product family, that integration has to be enabled. Okay, the integration has to be enabled. So uh, and that whatever data models, whatever tables or views available in the Talio may not be available directly into your Fusion product family today. So, in example, in your Fusion Core HR, if you go to your Fusion Core HR and uh, try to query for the data into the Talio, you won't get that because Core HR itself is residing in a different data model, and you that that data model have access only to the Fusion product family. Uh, uh, Fusion product family in sense the technically the Fusion uh, in-house uh, uh, ERP family. And Talia is outside of that outside of that family, and uh, that tables won't be accessible to you. So that you need to pull that data from the Talio every frequent basis, based on how your systems are. Maybe daily, or maybe weekly, or maybe bi-weekly, or maybe hourly. You don't know. It's based on how your company uh, is, is using the Talia product. So that integration should happen, even though if you use all the fusion. Products, Core HR, Fusion Core HR, and Fusion Talio. That is one thing. If you use Talio to connect with your in-house application, you don't have you don't have Fusion Cameron Cameron Capital Management. If you don't you don't have Fusion Core HR, but if you have Fusion in-house applications, then you need to use uh, 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 then you need to use uh, uh, Talio uh, integration actually. So. Talio integration, Talio gives a product called Talio Client Connect, TCC. This Talio Client Connect is actually which you can download and this Talio Client Connect is a true software which you need to install on your Windows machine. It is uh, uh, it's not something which will run on uh, a Unix. So you, have, you need to ensure that we need to install the Windows machine in your company server. If, 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 you, are, if you are using Talio for connecting in-house application, if you are using Talio for your Fusion product family, Fusion itself provides an inbuilt integration between Fusion and Talio automatically. You don't need to install anything like that. That will come in default. If you are using it for in-house application, then you need to install the Talio client connect. And then uh, I mean, some more additional steps needs to be in involved there. You need to install in your Windows machine and a Windows server, and you have to bring it up and running uh, on a daily basis, something like that. Okay, so coming to the Fusion, Fusion product, they have they gave this connectivity by default from Fusion and Talio, TCC, that is called Talio Client Connect. Okay, and it is used for transferring data 
to went from Talio to Fusion or in-house application. And it is, as I said, it is being owned and hosted by the client itself because when the client itself need to install uh, uh, on the Windows machine and bring it up and running. Okay, but in Fusion Perspective, they have given it by default out of the box and uh, we can use it just like that. Okay, and it 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 uh, that the the data transfer from Talio to uh, uh, Talio to other products works in the XML format or CSV format. You can it can you can do that. And what the common uses of this Talio client connect is we can uh, typically what we need to do once employees onboarded. Next up is to hire the employee. So new head information goes out of the Talio Talio on a frequent basis. So uh, from Talio to Fusion or Talio to in-house application, new head information will go. And similarly, uh, the organization structures, what we maintain in our core HR, that core HR can be Fusion or that can be in-house application. Those core HR structures should move back to the Fusion, move back to the Talio because that is the place when you create a requisition, create a vacancy, you say what is the job title, which location you are going to hire this person, or what is the department that person belongs to, who is the hiring manager. That information has to bring back from the in-house or EBS or, or Fusion applications into the Talio Connect so that you use that organization structures or work structures or employee information to create your vacancies and do the onboarding processes or create the approval processes to and fro interaction and how you do schedule the to and fro interaction is purely based on our company policies and how our company has using the Talio product itself. So when Talio is fully integrated to Fusion Headsum in future release, would the data model and all necessary integration items from Talio be in Fusion then? That's a good question though. Okay, so let me talk a little bit about the future of Talio. What, what's the future of Talio and uh, what is the Oracle plans on this Talio product especially? So, uh, as of today, Talio is a different product. And Fusion is a different product. Fusion has their own data models. Talio has their own data models. So these two systems will talk together by sending the data on a frequent basis using the Talio Client Connect. That is clear. Now, the future of that is what Oracle is saying today is, I have been to the Oracle Open World Conference happened last month, October 2nd to 5th. So Oracle, at that conference, they suddenly uh, all spoke about that they are planning to have a recruiting application in the fusion itself. They said that they said that we are going to release from release 13 onwards. We are going to have a recruiting application in the fusion itself. Then the next question is why you're doing that? Because Talia is your, your in-house product, which is offering the recruiting and onboarding and why you are doing that again in the fusion. So, the reason is the, exactly the same thing what uh, uh, Olu is asking the question here. What Oracle wanted to do is work, or whatever Talio functionalities are there, they want to lift and shift to the Fusion itself so that it is available within the Fusion uh, 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 Enterprise Repository so that you could able to access those data models within the Fusion product itself. So what our functionalities are being offered in Talio, they want to reinvent, redesign, re-implement everything in the Fusion product itself. And uh, uh, the plan is to imp implement everything in the Fusion product itself so that uh, uh, the recruiting and onboarding applications are can be used within Fusion itself, no need to have integration between Talio and Fusion. They want to take out the Talio out of the picture. So we were we were asking, right? I mean, I mean, no. what's the use? I mean, uh, uh, what's the use in sense? Why, then why should we implement Talio when we are planning to move recruiting and onboarding into the fusion itself? Then why should we implement the Talio? That's a that's a primary question. Then what what I could say is, there's a couple of things. One thing is the recruiting product itself won't be ready for next two three years, though it will be released. But the functionality is very much less, less compared to Talio, and uh, uh, definitely they cannot meet the standards of Talio at least for the next two three years. 
and what they said is if at all the recruiting and onboarding is completely available into the fusion what they said is they will give, give a seamless transition from the tally to the fusion applications so that we so that the transition i mean and they said that the licensing of tally can be transferred to the fusion recruiting and onboarding uh, licensing and they will give a smooth transition from the tally they will they do that conversion they said that but definitely uh, every company has to do on their own they do the conversion from tally to the fusion recruiting and onboarding so that the user experience level or licensing level there won't be any impact that's the future of it so we, do, we, we cannot guarantee it now maybe next uh, three years down the line possibility is that uh, uh f we are we need we are going to be using the fusion recruiting and onboarding product itself and we won't be uh looking at talia anymore that's the future but uh, that's all what i can say and we don't know what is going to happen but one thing to we need to know is whatever functionality is there the same functionality is being used there so nothing will be changed so whatever configurations we learn those configurations will be intact those learning will be intact so not to worry in the learning part okay okay so let's move forward uh, till now we have seen different screens different uh, 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 functionalities what talio is offering so i go and talk a little bit about a workflow a typical end to end workflow and uh, and what are the uh, typical uh, screens or other typical functionalities what how we are using to achieve this workflow in the talio okay so simple recruiting workflow how it happens so initially a recruiter or hiring manager create a requisition that is create a vacancy in the recruiting center once it is created then typically what needs to happen that requisition has to go for approval so uh, one second yeah sorry i'm back <laughs> So that when created the vacancy, that vacancy has to go through an approval process. It means that vacancy has to go for manager for approval. That vacancy, based on how you configured your vacancy, maybe that vacancy need a recruiter's manager approval, and maybe the hiring manager approval, and hiring manager director approval. Based on how your approvals are configured, then that vacancy has to go through approval approval process. And that approval process, that approval can be done in the recruiting. That manager log into recruiting application, and from recruiting center they can do that. Or an email will go to the manager from the email. That manager will click on that link and approve it from the eShare application center. So once it is approved, then it is ready to post for the public, right? So again, you will do that in the recruiting center, and you will post and source the job. When I post and source the job. So, like where you publish the job in the outside world or internal company portal or publish it to the staffing agencies or a job boards or, or other networking sites. That's what we do. And whatever terminology I have used, everything is configurable, and we're going to talk about each and everything individually. Okay. So and again, when I say sourcing here, sourcing, when I sourcing is for publishing the job, when I say sourcing, sourcing can be sometimes we can, uh, we can share the job in the LinkedIn or we can share it in the Facebook automatically. If you wanted to uh, source it, apart from the job boards, apart from the job groups, apart from the staffing agencies, apart from the non-print media and print media, apart from that, if you wanted to source and track the job over the uh, social networking sites that social that uh, uh, sourcing uh, oracle sourcing is separate licensing again we have to buy it separately for sourcing alone just want to mention here about that once it is posted in the public once it is hosted in the public then what public will do they will apply for the job the way they will apply that they will apply the career section the first screen what i shown you they go to career section and apply for the job once the candidates apply for the job and it is again recruiters managers responsibility to uh, manage candidates who applied for the job and who is the yes candidate who is the right candidate and uh, uh, whom you can proceed ahead uh, uh, 
proceed ahead of the further process they have to do the pre screening of the jobs of the candidates and also if they not if they can't find candidates properly then they have to source more candidates then how do they can source it how they can fetch in the existing database how they can look at the look at the interest of the employee of the candidates who already applied based on the interest pull their data and to send out the notifications to them how do you want to send the notifications not on notifications on daily basis are you wanted to do it manually are you wanted to uh, uh, are you wanted to while sending the notifications how do you want to config that notification do you want it to ask for the new resume again are you want to ask for the uh, ask for the interest again based on how you want to do the configure the paragraphs in each and every communication you can you, you will have full flexibility of the configuration of the communication methodologies okay and once once we got the candidates and we were able to do the pre-screening when we feel that this person is ready to look at then you have to screen and interview it again you do it in the recruiting uh issue where recruiters and managers do the screening of the employees or screening of the candidates and they do the interview and there is a subsets of processes involved in that uh, first interview second interview based on whatever way you decide uh, uh, you can you can you can mention that in the candidate selection workflow we will talk about csw in detail it's very big very big topic to talk about so once it's screened and interview the next step is to give the employee an offer give the give the candidate an offer that offer can be done by a recruiter or hr or hiring manager see that hr comes here again I said that some companies HR may be involved in every every phase. Maybe some companies HR will come only when employee is ready to get hired. While well, maybe maybe at the beginning of the offer process. Once we once we start the offer, HR can log into recruiting center or through eShare application center. Recruiter can make an offer and hire the candidate. Once they hire the candidate, that candidate has to be. When, when I say when hiring a candidate is the place where the recruiting center and onboarding both will come into picture because onboarding is the process comes after after and while hiring the employee, right? So maybe the reference check or a background check or W four forms or direct deposit forms or W two not W two W four direct deposit if it is W four if it is in USA if it is uh, 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 based on the countries. So once you get that and uh, uh, that personal information form, whatever information they received as part of that onboarding process, and that should be that that hire that position will become filled and it is reported that position got filled and that hired employee employee or whoever employee is hired, that hired employee will flow to the core HR system to tell your client connect as a new hire and the new hire record will be created in the core HR and core HR uh, once the record is created and uh, uh, that that candidate will become an employee in the tally application once they have to, um, that candidate become employee then that employee how the employee can access tally application again through career section that employee instead of accessing through externally this employee can access through internally so this is the typical recruiting workflow that happens in any recruiting application and the same as what happens in the uh, uh, Talio as well. So in Talio, this is the beginning point for us to start talking about functionality and configurations. So we, are, we will start with requisition and we will see how to create the requisition. What are the sections that are available by creating requisition? How we can create the requisition templates? How the templates will pop up automatically, and uh, uh, and many more details. We will walk through each and every every topic, and at the end of our whole uh, recruiting and onboarding uh, sessions, we should be able to we should be able to manage each and every step here, and we should be able to manage each and every configuration in each of the step. Okay, so. And yeah, this is the process flow. As uh, I know, it's scheduled for that one hour. Uh, if you allow for ten more minutes, then I will I will quickly cover. Or if you think we can stop here, I can stop here. It's based on uh, 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 your choice. Uh, sorry, please let's proceed out. Fine. Uh, I think I missed it. What is it? Please.
So I said, let's proceed. Okay. If good. you want 10 minutes, that'll be fine. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> the next thing is, uh, till now we have just spoken about where you are you. So we didn't go into the detail of uh, any of our topics. So it's just a overview of what we will be covering and what are the different components existing in the Talio. The next thing is the foundation of Talio. Foundation in Talio in sense how the behavior, I, I was talking about approvals, I was talking about we can configure, configure, configure many times. So when I say configure, uh, I mean, configuring the visibility of it or, uh, 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 or who, I mean, the categorizing the employees or who can see what, how we can define the approval, how we can, uh, when we say, when we, when, we, when, uh, when, uh, uh, when they submit for approval, in approval, who is going to get what? So how we can differentiate the approvals? Everything in the future tally of go by OLF, organization, location, function. These are three components which are actually the building blocks of this Talio whole product. For anywhere we are going to talk, when we are going to talk about this OLF very, very frequently in all our subsequent sessions. Because these are the three driving factors of a security, driving factors for the configurations, for our approvals, for our documentation design, for our correspondence, correspondence as our communications, for our offer templates, for anything, these three are the building blocks because uh, 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 example, when you create a vacancy, how do you create the vacancy? Vacancy creation, vacancy creation may have a 50 to 60 or 100 fields. 100 fields and uh, a job description or uh, job requirements, maybe a couple of uh, sections with, uh, with the detailed descriptions. Okay, so all those fields which can employee or manager or a recruiter cannot fill it out or fill it manually. They have to be auto populated. If you are filling for a job, something in US, then some standard field should get auto populated. Maybe in the United States, you should have a valid uh, work visa or if it is, uh, 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 it should be at least 18 years and above to work if it is some department. So based on department, based on the location, some kind of fields, some kind of required properties, some kind of descriptions should come up automatically into, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just talking about equation vacancy creation. Those kind of information should come automatically while creating the offer. Those kind of information will come up automatically uh, uh, while, uh, 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 while sending the correspondence email communications. Okay. Or typically when employee logs into when, when, when a person logs into the recruiting center, they should be able to see only some set of sections. Some something else should be hidden. How do you define that? Maybe based on the job, what that employee do, maybe the employee is having a job of a recruiter, then they should be able to do everything. If the person is a hiring manager, then they should not see something. So based on the job, we can decide that. Based on the location, we can decide what I mean. Uh, I'm just giving an example. We can define what data has to be populated and what data has to be there. And again, so posting the job, where you want to post the job, where which websites you want to post the job. If it is US, post it in the LinkedIn. If it is India, post it in the post it in the uh, Nokri or Monster. So depends upon the location. How do you want to post the job? That location in the job decides that. Similarly, based on the department, if you are working in the manufacturing department, you should be at least, uh, you should be ready to work uh, over, uh, during, day, uh, during the night time. You should be able to, you should be able to work, work during our time hours. I mean, there's, there's some kind of descriptions in the communications or uh, offer letters or rejection letters or job descriptions. All these things should come up automatically. How do we define that? So it comes with the organization, location, functions are the key data to prepare any of this information. So these three data should get loaded into Talio on daily basis from the core HR application. In core HR, you will be having this OLF, your organizations, locations, functions will be there in the uh, uh, your OLF, your, your, your core HR, that data, whenever it is updated in the core HR, that data has to move automatically into the Talio and Talio will have the latest OLF uh, functionalities in the Talio. So that based on the OLF, all these 
configurations will be decided and will be functional. Okay, so this this actually this OLF not only requisition structure, it also with a candidate profile. If a candidate applies for a job based on that job location, job department, and job uh, uh, a function. So uh, the, jo the jo job function, what we can build is candidate profile. What Talia has an intelligent mechanism so that when employer when candidate apply for the job, it automatically builds a profile saying that oh this profile this person is interested in this location in this department in this job. If that candidate applies for another job, automatically the candidate profile will fill up again. Okay, this candidate is interested for this location, this department, and this job. When the candidate profile is built automatically with that profile, what we can do when we at later point of time, maybe in a year later, if, if you want to look for people who are interested for this job or this location, you could be able to pull it from their candidate profile. Okay, and also we could be able to we could be able to see by reporting what are the potential number of candidates interested in this location so that okay we can decide upon the multiple factors or compensation we can reduce a little bit because competition is high too many people interested here so we can there are many more things using these uh, candidate profiles from our reporting perspective and all these things will go by olf organization location job functionation job function it is called contextualization Okay, so we are going to talk about this OLF very, very frequently. And we are going to, I mean, in fact, our, our configurations will start from the OLF. From there, we will start with uh, all our foundations. Okay, this is one example. Example, ABC, INC is a company. I have companies, locations are US, Australia. Within US, we have California. Within California, Oakland, San Jose. Similarly, for ABC INC organization, we have different departments or divisions. Corporate division, retail division, call center. In retail division, we have distribution department, stores department. Compared to job function, finance, accounting, customer service, within finance, we have accounting, within account, we have tax audit. So these are all different ways we can contextualize our OLF structures and this the data source for this feed is our core HR, which actually feed to Talio client Talio on a frequent basis using the Talio client correct. Okay, and also not only that, as I said, this, 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 okay, when I say OLF, it is called a smart org, smart organization. That is what the terminology used in the tally for this, defining the OLF. Once this smart organization, these configurations were used, as I said, what questions, what pre screening questions we have to ask to the candidate based on the, as I said, if it is US, you have a working visa. Uh, based on the based on the country specific if it's Canada you have a stand work permit you can ask these skinny work these skinny questions and also use a group you can not only that how do you identify this person the recruiter based on the job function how do you identify this person is a staffing manager so we can create a user group so that based on the user groups actually user group actually where we can based on the user groups we can define what screens to as access what data has to see we can define that so you can create user groups and also as i said requisition required requisition and candidate fields what data should show up on the requisition what data should show up on the candidate profile if the candidate if the if you are applying for the job in the job in the uh, us then first name last name uh, and disability status and veteran status, all those things should be captured. If the job is within within, within uh, US, okay. So uh, 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 that is that is important for equal employment opportunity reports, EEU one uh, reports. So we need these details to be filled uh, if it is uh, uh, if it is that country. Okay, what is the required fee, required data? What is the, what are the what are the fields? What did it display on the vacancy? And also on the candidate profile, okay. And also, what's the workflow defined? Like if you, if you, if a, if a recruiter submits a vacancy, okay. So we have a we have recommend that that vacancy should go for approval to that department as vice president. Then we have based on that department. Then we will look we'll look at that department and we will we will get dynamic approval routing and we will pull the device president who is available in the department and we can send the approval notification to that person so this workflow workflows again based on this ola functionality 
and again correspondence what data has to be uh, there in the correspondence communication that can be offer letter a conversation letter that can be an initiating application center anything how we can what data should be visible on that is based on again based on the a smart arc so typically this is the structure where we define the organization primary location and job field so in organization we have a division department location we have a country state and city job we have a category function uh, function these two so these are typical configurations where we do and this drives the whole a uh, whole uh, configuration uh, uh, things in the uh, uh, tally okay so yeah same thing candidate file in the candidate file based on the as i said if the employee yep the candidate applies for the job in financial and accounting under the function accounting and uh, uh, in the corporate division in the united states then what happens automatically candidate profile will be built in this case this person applied for the three jobs looks like three jobs in this departments in this locations automatically this candidate profile is built and this candidate profile will be used for us in our future recruiting purposes though this person got rejected for now maybe long times later if you want to pull someone who is interested in the cit support then we can use our database to pull that the person back and send out the communications and the interests we can do that okay so yeah i mean uh, as i promised i took 15 minutes more so yeah i mean uh, there are many more slides to cover so i will i will keep a hard stop here and i will take take couple of questions from you and then uh, um, we can wrap up uh, for today's session so you can unmute yourself if you want to post any question and then um, uh, um, uh, i will try to answer if i can This is Olu. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much um, for the for the introduction. Thank you. I just I just want to know what is the plan for this course and what's the schedule? What arrangement have um, have you made with um, Ravi? Yeah. And uh, what is, I mean, what should we be expecting or, you know, <clears throat> so that's, I just want to know going forward from here, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. so. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, this session is all about uh, uh, introduction, what, uh, uh, what are the top, what are the contents uh, we are going to cover in our subsequent uh, 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 classes? So I'm going to publish the uh, uh, agenda to Ravi, and he's going to share with you all. And uh, uh, and I also I'm going to mention uh, how many days we are going to take and uh, uh, when we are going to start. So once the once that agenda is being shared with you all, then uh, uh, Oh, I can start on the day onwards. Okay, thanks. No problem. So you're not very quite sure whether this, um, whether your session is going to be before the technical section or not. You know, how I, what I'm trying to ask, is it going to be very soon, say from next, weekend or um oh, is it going to take uh, longer than that uh it won't take longer than that most probably it may it uh, i'm planning to start in next uh, uh a week or 10 days okay yeah and uh, um and uh, that's going to be the schedule is going to be around uh, uh 35 days uh, 35 days yep yeah. That's the maximum because uh, if you are taking, if you're typically looking for the uh, looking for the uh, func uh, functional part alone, functional part alone will be covered in the first uh, uh, fifteen days. The whole functionality of the tally, and uh, 
and next uh, next one week i'm going to talk about uh, integrations uh, integrations and uh, uh, connectivity because that is that is where actually most of uh, hands on we have to do coming to integrations and uh, 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 sorry five days will go for integrations and reporting both and then uh, i going to talk about uh, 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 little more in depth details about uh, advanced recruiting of uh, uh, enabling it in the mobile and uh, enabling it uh, 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 on uh, different uh, sourcing sites uh, and also uh, designing the career sections and career portals for internal employees and external employees so uh, that is going to take uh, uh, that once recruiting and this career portals is going to take another week so that's why it, i i gave her i took it takes around uh, uh, 25 days like that but i took a buffer around 10 days more so if if anywhere if you go in detail about the technical details then uh, i just want to keep uh, those many days as a buffer okay yeah so the um is it going to be Saturday and Sunday or and if so, how many hours a day should should it be? If it is Saturday and Sunday, then I think we need to take more hours on uh, uh, on each uh, weekend. Maybe if it is a daily basis, then uh, on weekly weekly basis. Sorry, if it is daily basis, it takes an hour. But if you go by uh, weekends, we will we have to schedule maybe another two hours or two point five hours like that. In that case, then we may need to we can complete it within uh, maybe um, maybe around uh, uh, five to six weekends. We could be able to uh, yeah six weekends maybe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just want to have an idea. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. Oh, hi, uh, Lakshmi. It's uh, Shazad. Uh, yes. Olu, thank thank you for asking those questions. Those are the same sort of um, question I was going to ask as well. Okay. And Lakshmi, thank you for answering. This gives me an impression uh, to sort of uh, free my weekends up as well uh, going forward. So yeah. thank you for that. No problem. Yeah, thank you as well. I think that's one of the questions we have. So, right. because I know weekend will be more suitable for some sure. of us, especially in UK, because some of us work Monday to Friday. So, and okay. I know he is completely different from our GMT. So, okay. yeah, so weekend will be very good for us, especially early in the morning on Saturdays and Sundays. So, yeah, that, that's good. Perfect. Yeah. Even uh, that's also good. Okay. Hi. Uh, my name yeah. is Deepika. Uh, actually, uh, I'm a complete fresher. I don't have any IT experience. Mm -hmm. And I recently have started learning Oracle Fusion HCM. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how much is this going to help me in my job? Uh, for my job? Do you think I need to have some experience before learning Talio? Mm -hmm. not, not necessary. So, mm -hmm. the model, because the schedule I have given, 30 days like that, if it is, I might think whatever I'm going to cover, I'm going to cover keeping that none of you, I mean, you will have experience. Some, sometimes uh, I might go a little faster, but uh, whatever I'm going to cover, it doesn't need any prerequisites. Okay. So it's not necessary. And uh, uh, maybe for you, as you haven't worked in, uh, did you work on any HR sector before? No. Okay, so you didn't work on that. Maybe some some comp concepts you might uh, feel a little faster, and uh, definitely you can contact me offline, and uh, uh, I can help you out in those cases. But definitely for for uh, for this one, uh, we are going to cover everything from scratch. So mm -hmm. no prerequisites for this. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh hi, uh, Lakshmi Shazad again. Uh, yes, just a quick question uh, with regards to having. Um, practices done on a Pacific 
um, test environment. Will we be getting access to an environment to practice as well, or is that a closed uh, environment? Um, actually, uh, when I said it takes uh, 10 days for me to start, actually we are working on the provisioning of the environment. So once we have the environment ready, we are going to start the sessions immediately. So yeah, uh, yeah we, we are trying to get some instance where we can do the practice. Definitely we need practice. So uh, that's why we're taking some time. So we will confirm you on that part uh, as soon as we get that session. So I'm not okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. No problem. So I like to have one Vivek, of yes. questions which... Uh, yes, Vivek? Yeah, so are you going to cover the TCC part also on this? Yep. As you showed in this slide. Yes, I'm going to cover the TCC part. And the additional configuration for like i9 with different vendors and uh, mm, yeah, so actually for additional configurations, uh, we typically uh, need to have it. We need to have that uh, connection enabled from their endpoints. So uh, typically, how would, how it happens to you, right? Right when in the onboarding process to the background check, there are two ways. One is manual. One is automatic. Manually is actually we need to manually go and fill it on the uh, website. Other way is we Oracle is offering third party people who can do uh, the INN verification for us. We can uh, we can enable the integration with. So we need to have someone some test uh, site which we can help which we can do that. Uh, 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 Maybe not I9. Typically, we may we need, we need some example which we can uh, respond to our question. That's it. So I will see if I can get that. So definitely, we'll do that auto integrations between the third party to to Talio. So I will try to get that part as well. And about the sourcing, are we going to uh, you know how are we going to cover with the you know LinkedIn or uh, with the any other job portal? Are we going to cover that as well? Oh, we may not be able to post it directly into that uh, uh, job portal because it needs a uh, uh, separate licensing. Maybe we will we will try to post to job boards. Job boards is actually third party who takes our jobs and post it into the multiple websites. So we will we will we will try testing till job boards, but we may not be publishing over the job sites. Or at least we can get some, you know, um, pages or links. Yeah. Thank you. You can look at the Thank process. You. Yeah, there are multiple multiple uh, uh, challenges involved in the Talio, especially coming to job posting and sourcing. So we we we, we will make it seamless as much as we can, and uh, uh, I will try to explain that. Yes. Sure. Okay. Thank you so much. No problem. Uh, sorry. So another question. And, yeah. uh, this is Tunde. Uh, one of the questions I want to ask is: I know you mentioned earlier on that uh, Talio will be integrated into Fusion. Maybe if Talio or now decide to move into Fusion, I mean, what I mean is to be integrated. That means we don't be TCC or maybe any other uh, any operation uh, system anymore. Training. Would you notify us as well and just let us know you what I'm trying to say now? So you're saying that, that uh, so when once... No, what I'm saying is, if the, what we do the uh, Talio is confusion, is completely separate system. So what you said initially was, it will be eventually integrated into fusion. Correct. So while we're doing the training, if it's integrated, would you let us know so that we can just quickly have okay. a feel of the yeah. new integration? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I'll let you know, release 13 is not yet, I mean, uh, we have the test instances available for the release 13. Uh, uh, okay. But definitely in release 13, that whatever model they're offering, it doesn't work because that's very, very basic. Oracle itself is saying that it doesn't work for you people who wanted to move to the recruiting and on, but doesn't work. It's very, very basic functionality. So as of now, okay. there's no no plan at all to, uh, I mean, uh, 
no need to think of it at all so maybe as i said maybe another two years uh once it gets stabilized maybe at that point of time even oracle recommends people to go to recruiting and uh, onboarding in the fusion and again even oracle don't have onboarding in the fusion i'm not sure even they have any, any plan to move onboarding at all to the fusion actually whatever they said in the last team last month open world they just said only the uh, recruiting is a module which we are going to introduce in the fusion so there is no specific uh, 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 instructions or specific uh -huh. guidelines on that so uh -huh. not for you if there is anything is changed but no worries on that part okay yeah uh, thanks no problem okay so uh, any more questions uh, sorry, one other question which I want yeah. to, especially anyone in UK who's on the system, who's on the, is online, I will advise if you can email Ravi, so uh, Ravi can have your email addresses, because I know some of you are just personally one on one, and okay. I send the link. So it would be good if uh, Ravi can send, uh, no, no, I'm not talking to you, the trainer, I'm talking about to, to from someone like Shasad, Olu, and I've not tired this is online. I'm not sure of anyone so who who's here. So the um, the rainbow instructor can have your email address so okay. they can communicate with you direct. Yeah. That, that's that's good, yeah. We'll do that. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, uh, Olu again. Olu? Um I di I didn't I didn't get your name at the beginning. Oh, sorry, my name is Lakshmi. Lashmi, how do you spell that? Lashmi. It is L A K L as lemon, A as alpha, K as keen, S as Sam. Sorry, I've lost it again. <laughs> it is L. <laughs> I just uh, <laughs> I just type here. Yeah. Yeah, just, just, just put on this. Yeah, okay, Lashmi, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little difficult to pronounce the. Um, Shazad again. Um, you know, with the with the email and the agenda and the, the course uh, the course agenda itself. Um, would you be able to also send um, the pricing as well for for this? Yeah, I think uh, it'll be all in there anyway. Sure. I think think Ravi will do that if I'm yeah, right. Ravi, yeah. yeah, Ravi, yeah. Okay, thank that. you. Okay. So last me sorry, one of my last I'm not sure if we mentioned anything about workflow. I'm not sure if there's anything workflow on this because uh, normally when we have notification there would be workflow anyway. So is yes. there anything workflow? Yes, workflow will be I mean, you are asking, do we have, are we going to cover workflow? Yeah, I'll cover workflow, just yeah. to make sure. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, workflow actually uh, is very, you know, we are going to cover that in very detail. Yes, we have different kinds okay. of workflow, static workflow, dynamic approval, routing workflow. And we are going to use workflows in each okay. part while creating the requisition, while creating the offers and uh, uh on the okay. on on the onboarding process we are going to cover workflow in all these three places and yes workflow okay we'll be covering that for sure without that we cannot move forward yeah that's true okay. another question i want to ask is you know there's something called new ir template udfs uh, yeah. which is user divine field yeah. user divine um, yeah. the the sign of user divine f are we this template because I know I'm yeah. also out to make sure uh, PDFs. Uh, if you if you have some PDF, you can link it into Talio. I will going yeah. to cover some specifics like that because they're very yeah. important. Yeah, yeah, okay. definitely, definitely will cover that. So user defined fields and standard fields, we are going to cover cover that. We are, go we are going to cover securities around that and uh, documentation okay. center we are going to cover that if you feel anywhere anything is missing just let me know we can cover in later sessions so no worries on that part okay yeah so these yes, sessions i would like to be more and more more interactive uh, and uh, because we 
Talia has given provision to explore many more things and uh, maybe some things I might be missed. So definitely it is easily explorable. So just let me know. I can cover it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And uh, thank you everyone for your great time today. I really appreciate that. And uh, I'm really looking forward to interact with you all in our upcoming sessions. And uh, if you don't have any questions, then I will uh, end it off today. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.